this Savior. He is yours this evening. Amen. What a wonderful Savior we have that would just think so much of us. Amen. Let's sing that song, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Aren't you glad you're leaning on His arms this evening? Amen. Oh, what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, in this, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting God. Well, I'm leaning, oh, leaning, oh, safe and secure from all alarms. Well, I'm leaning, well, I'm leaning. Everlasting arms. I said, Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. I said, Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting. said, what have I to dread? What have I to fear? I'm leaning on the everlasting God. Well, I have blessed peace with my Lord so dear. I'm leaning on the everlasting God. Well, I'm leaning Oh, I'm leaning, oh, leaning on the everlasting God. Well, I'm leaning, oh, I'm leaning, oh, leaning on the everlasting God. Amen. 
Amen. Aren't you glad you're in his arms this evening? Amen. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Aren't you glad that you can say you're one of them this evening? Amen. Well, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Well, I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Well, I'm one of them. Well, I'm one of them. Well, I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Oh, there are people almost everywhere whose hearts are all aflame with the fire that fell at Pentecost, which cleansed and made them clean. Well, it is burning now within my heart. Oh, glory to his name. Well, I'm so glad I can say I'm one of thee. I'm glad of that. Well, I'm one of thee. Well, I'm one of thee. Well, I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of thee. Well, I'm one of thee. Well, I'm one of thee. Well, I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of thee. They were gathered in the upper room, all praying in his name. They were baptized with the Holy Ghost, and powerful service came. Oh, now what he did for them that day, he'll do for you. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Won't you tell him? Well, I'm one of them. Say I'm one of thee. Well, I'm one of thee. Well, I'm one of thee. Well, I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of thee. Amen. Aren't you happy about that this yeah. evening? That you can say you're one of them. Amen. He made a way. He made a way. When there seems no other way, he always makes a way for you. Say amen. And you made a way for me. When our back was against the wall, and it looked as if it was over, you made And we're standing here only because you made and you made a way. Oh, you made a way for me. When our backs was against the wall and it looked as if it was over. standing here only because you made you move mountains oh and you cause walls to fall with your power oh you perform miracles and there is nothing
we go to the prayer request this evening. We're so thankful that he makes a way for each and every one of these requests this evening. Amen. We're glad to have our brother Donnie Nicholson back in the house of the Lord with us this evening. Amen. Give him a round of applause this evening. Amen. He's been going through a lot of pain, a little trial. We're glad to have him here this evening. So we want to continue to remember our brother Donnie. Also want to continue to lift up our pastor that God would just touch his body and strengthen him this evening. And then also for in the morning as well, our brother Andrew Spencer is at Oklahoma at uh, Brother Wendell Martin's youth camp out there. So we want to be remembering them. Uh, Sister Katie went with him. And Brother Andrew Glover is speaking out there as well. So just be remembering both of those brothers in prayer that God will use them mightily. Amen. Brother Ron in church, please remember my dad in prayer. He has a blood clot in his heart. Also continue to pray for my sister Leslie. Thank you, Brother Charles. Amen. We just want to be remembering his dad there. That God will just touch his body. Please keep my mom, Ruthann, in your prayers. She is still dealing with headaches from her concussion. Also, Sister Savannah needs prayer for severe back pain due to a disc problem. And also want to remember uh, Sister Joanne's uh, dog had an, ate an Oreo this past week. So dogs and Oreos and chocolate don't mix. So we want to pray for that as well. God's mindful of each and every one of those requests. Amen. Right. I want to continue to lift up our sister Sarah Gooden, that God would just continue to strengthen her body and touch her. Also, Sister Pearl Berry. I want to be lifting up our sister Linda Craiger in our prayers, that God would just minister to her this evening as well. Amen. Thank you so much for all of our church family, for the calls, texts, cards, gifts, and meals during Randy's treatments. Thank you especially for all of the prayers and the love you showed to our family. We ask continued prayers and complete remission for Brother Randy. Amen. Love in Christ, Brother Randy and Sister Wanda and Brother Seth Hinkle. Amen. We want to continue to lift up our Brother Randy, that God would just continue to touch his body and strengthen him. Amen. Glad to have Brother William and his family back in the house of the Lord with us this weekend. He's been going through some trials there with the sicknesses going around, but our God's more than able to touch each and every one of us. So we're glad to have him. We'll ask him to lead us to the throne of grace this evening. Amen. Amen. Do you love the Lord tonight? Amen. Amen. Let's go to him in prayer. Dear gracious, kind, heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we certainly deem it such a privilege, Lord, that we can come and be gathered together, Lord Jesus. Father God, that we can come into your presence, Lord, where we can just come and relax. And Father God, to open up our hearts, Lord Jesus, and Lord, release praises, Lord, Father God, and such thanksgiving, Lord, and appreciation for all that you've done. Lord, how grateful and thankful we are to you, Lord, for the blood that was shed, Father, Lord, your precious blood, Lord, that we're bought with the price, Lord, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, that blood is just as powerful, Lord, as it was the day it was shed. Though the chemistry be gone, but yet, Lord, the life that was in that blood is still forgiving sins. It's still healing sicknesses, Father. It's still filling with the Holy Ghost. It's still cleansing a bride. It's still calling out a bride. Lord Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ, Father God, over our lives this evening, Lord. And we just, Lord, want to give you thanksgiving, Lord, in our hearts for giving us an ear to hear, Lord, this truth. Lord, this truth is broadcast to all, but, Lord, it is received by the elected Lord of the age in a very special way. How thankful we are to you, Lord, that you've given us, Lord, a heart to receive your word, that when the word comes, Lord, even though sometimes it may make us feel a bit uncomfortable, but Lord, we want every word that you have for us, Lord. We don't want to pick and choose and cherry pick as it was, but Lord, we want to open up our hearts and may the word come, Lord, and just take away anything that's not of you, Father. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you search our lives. Make it according to your perfect will. If there's anything displeasing in our lives, we ask that you correct it even in this service. May as the preaching of the word, Lord, and as the moving of your spirit goes by, Lord, may you come to us. Come and deal with our hearts, Father. You know what we're going through. You know everything about us, Father. You literally know us better than we know ourselves. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you come by our way.
Father God, Lord, you heard each request, Lord. You know every name, Lord, behind that request, Lord, represents a life, represents a trial, represents a situation. Lord, we release the Holy Spirit, Father, Lord, to go and brood over each and every request, Father. Heal and deliver, Lord Jesus, and make whole just as your word promised, just as we're believing. We're expecting, Lord, the miraculous. We're expecting, Lord Jesus, for you to move on each and every request. Lord, we lift up Brother Randy to you. Lord, we thank you for bringing him through, Lord, this treatment. We just ask now, Lord, may that treatment, Lord, find its mark. And may there not be a single cell of cancer left, Lord. May he be completely healed for your honor and your glory. May you continue to touch Brother Donnie, Lord, in each and every request, Lord. I can't remember them all. But Father God, Lord, I just lay my unworthy hands on them. But Lord, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you go to each and every one. Grant it, Lord Jesus, we pray. We ask that you touch Brother Ron. Bless him as he brings forth the word. Bless the tithes and the offerings. Lord, I pray that you please be with the meetings in Oklahoma there. And we just give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. We love you, Lord, and we thank you with all of our hearts. We don't deserve you, Father, but it's not about what we deserve. It's about what you do for us, Lord, out of love. And we love you in return. In Jesus Christ's name. this time we'll receive this evening's offering. Glad to have Brother Marcus Turner with us this evening. I'll have him uh, come sing for us if he will. And Sister Phyllis, if you help him out there on the piano there. Amen. You give as God's blessed you. Also after they sing for us, he sings for us this evening, Sister Emma Huffman and Sister Caitlin, they come sing for us. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated after you've given. Friend, don't worry about this heavy load I carry. Don't be concerned if it sends me to my knees. Oh, I know a place where my Lord will like me. It'll be all. Soon as I touch Calvary, oh, if my feeble hand of faith can only reach out through this dark and dreary storm. Calvary, oh, if 
my feeble hand. A faith can only reach out. Oh, through this dark and dreary storm of unbelief. Oh, if he'll slip his name. Calvary Oh, I'll be alright Now that I touch Calvary Praise the Lord Stories that have proved your faithfulness, and I've seen miracles my mind can't comprehend. And there is beauty in what I cannot understand. Jesus, it's you. Jesus, it's you.
Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. We see families reunited. We see prodigals returned. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. We see trouble. you tell me he can't do it because he can do it all that's my God this evening amen let's stand sing a song saved by grace I've been saved by grace amen. saved by grace well, I've been saved by grace well, my name is in the book of life and my sins are washed away Saved by grace Well, I've been saved by grace Well, it's not what I deserve But I'm saved by grace Well, I was alone in the darkness I could not find my way Well, Jesus shined his light on me and then he turned on my night Let's sing that again I was alone Well I was alone in the darkness I could not find my way Then Jesus shined his light on me And then he turned on my night Today Well say by grace Well I've been saved by grace Sins are washed away, saved by grace. Well, I've been saved by grace. Oh, it's not what I deserve. I'm 
That city and those gates swing open wide. I'm gonna sing redemption story of how he brought me to the other side. Oh, when I reach that city and those gates swing open wide, I'm gonna sing redemption story of how he brought me from. Aren't you thankful for that? Amen. Saved by His grace. Amen. As a matter of fact, it's 100% grace. Not what I did, not what I deserve. It was His unmerited grace of God to us. And amen. Aren't you thankful for that? Amen. I was worthy of much less, but. God rich in mercy to us. And hey, we were making choices that was heading us in the wrong way. And, amen. And we're just really honest with that. So so good to see you. Uh, many of you were there last night at Brother Mike Walls, and I want to thank you for coming. And, and by seeing you now, I see you had a good trip home. And so thank you for coming, and what a wonderful time that we had. And uh, God just blessed us in a special way. And we were able to see some old friends that were there. And and what a reunion that day is going to be when we all get together. And uh, we just are so thankful. Amen. Just want to make a couple of announcements for you just before we go forward. Brother Andrew is in Oklahoma. They're having an awesome time. And, and uh, he has preached two dynamic sermons already. This morning he pulled the pin, throwed the bomb. So it's been awesome. He and Brother Andrew Glover, it's an A&A &A meeting. And so... Uh, they're having the official AA meeting, so uh, uh, it's, it's just been glorious. Let's get that last seat in. Amen. Amen. Let's get that last one, and then we get to go home, and, and we're thankful for that. Next week, Brother Kelly, and move it down just a little bit. All right, is that good? All right. Next week, Brother Kelly and Sister Myra will be with us. And they were scheduled for it to May. They couldn't do May. So we, we moved it up, and here we are. We love Brother Kelly and Sister Myra and their family, their home here. And I invited Brother Tim Pruitt to come and enjoy the meeting with us. And so he'll be sitting up here and amening with us and enjoying the weekend off. And, and uh, then I'll take them a few days to rest. And so I, I just love these guys, and, uh, and so we so appreciate wouldn't it be a bad world if you didn't have no friends? And so, amen. Brother Kelly has been a wonderful friend to me as well as Brother Tim. Got a lot of other friends as well and don't want to shortcut nobody. And so, my best friend is sitting over here. She's blonde-headed in a green dress. And so, that's my best friend. So, amen. We've been buddies a long time. And so, if she can put up with me, I, I guess I can do, I know I can her. So, amen. So we want to be praying in a few weeks. We'll be going to the Louisiana Youth Camp. And I know, I know many of you are going. I'd like for you to begin praying for that. Amen. Praying that God would just finish it. We want to finish this work. And that's what our, des our desire is. Then in a few weeks, and Sister Connie, I didn't download that picture. But uh, in a few weeks, Brother Sean, April the 26th through the 30th. April the 26th through the 30th, Brother Sean Martin's tent meeting will be going on. Quite a few speakers will be there. And um, I, I don't know if we've got a brochure on the back, but we'll try to get it for you. 
On that weekend, we will not have Saturday night service because I'll be speaking there, and I'd like for you to come and be a part of that. Amen. And then we will have Sunday morning speak here, service here, and uh, Brother Andrew will be speaking that. He hasn't, he don't know it yet, but he's going to be speaking here on Sunday morning, so amen, amen. Don't you love the Lord? We got a lot of things that are going on. We're getting ready to go home to be in a rapture. Some people's too busy to take a rapture, but I'm not. I'm ready. Uh, I, I, can change, I can change my schedule anytime. And I'll be honest with you. I just love coming to church. This is my favorite time of the, of the week, and I can get through Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, and here we are, and we're just thankful that we can be here. It looks like you feel the same way, and so... We're just thankful for those things. And Brother Donnie, so good to see you. So good to see you. I want you to be praying for him and that God would just touch his body in a supernatural way. And amen. Amen. You're welcome to sit in my office if you want to do that. Amen. Brother Donnie's in a fight, and we're all in a fight, and Brother Andy's in a fight, and, and uh, well, cancer's going to lose. Gonna lose, and so we just, we just know that. We just know that. Brother Donnie and I both know that sometimes the cure is worse than the disease, and so, and so you know. But you just you just do it, and you take it by faith, and just ask the Lord to just help us. Yeah. Amen. It, aren't you just happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Isn't it good to us? Amen. 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 I love him with all my heart. Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. I want to speak to you tonight on an inspired word to an inspired seed. All of your Bible is inspired. It is the breath of God. It is God's thoughts in word form. He used 40 different writers and through them inspired them. And if you can think about Moses writing the, the first books of the Bible, Moses wasn't there. So God allowed him to see what happened in the Garden of Eden. He allowed him to go through Abraham's life. He allowed him in all of those and just actually took him right through it. That was not the thoughts of Moses. That was the thoughts of God being pulled through Moses. Whether it's Ezekiel or Jeremiah or Nahum Amen. or Brother Branham. Amen. The message of this day is the inspired word of God. Amen. As a matter of fact, it is the opticals on the inspired word. Because even, even this year, this book is still the the number one seller. Amen. As much as it's hated, it's still the number one seller. And I am thankful for that, but, but you know many men write books of theory and Amen. books of their own thoughts, but this is God's word. And you know we've had it in colleges and they've had great institutions that tried to decode the Bible, but God sent a prophet in this day he sent a prophet to a bride-believing people that would catch the word. And the reason you could catch the word is because God predestinated a seed on the inside of you. You can literally sit in the same church beside of one person that is not inspired. Because Brother Bram says in non-seed, there's just nothing to quicken. You can't make a goat a sheep but for a sheep he just says that's the truth Hattie Wright said that's absolutely the truth brother Branham and, 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 and let me just say this to you that's what we do we don't have to explain it we just believe it I don't even have to understand it all I just believe it with those thoughts in mind I want to speak to you on an inspired word to an inspired seed and the reason it's relevant to you 
It's because that predestinated seed on the inside of you, and this is your love letter that works for you. Paul wrote this 2,000 years ago, but it's to you. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And we can say amen to that. We believe that. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. I want to read that scripture aloud with each and every one of you. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Amen. You may be seated tonight. May God bless his word. In Revelation chapter 19 and verse 6, And I heard as if it was a voice of a great multitude, as a voice of many waters, as a voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come. And his wife has made herself ready. And you say, Amen. amen. And your amen's right there, says, So be it. I'm identified with that scripture. Amen. And to her, and that's you, was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. In Revelation chapter 21, I want to read about your future. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. I want to read that verse again, and I would like for you to read that with me. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. This is a tremendous scripture. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, nor neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Brother Fred, that's enough to shout about right there. Behold, I make all things new. When I look in the mirror, I'm glad for that. Amen. And he saith unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. Now this is our scripture. And he that overcometh, shall inherit all things. 
and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. I want you to say, he's talking about me. I want you to read the scripture with me now. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. God predestinated you to live in the darkest, wickedest, Satan's Eden that there's ever been. It was an age to which to which even the prophet couldn't even see past 1977. Let me just give you a for instance. How many is born after 77? Hallelujah, you babies, you babies. (laughs) I'm preaching to a kid crowd here. (laughs) Now, would you just think about this? Brother Branham preached in a time where there was no internet. No Facebook, none of this nonsense to where that the news was just boom. I mean, just everybody's got the news at their, and let me just say, if you feed on that all the time, you're gonna be a depressed person. If the first thing you get up and you are looking, I don't care what avenue that you listen to, you, you just look at all the murders and the nonsense that is going on. And you just look at how the world is falling apart. But if you can look at another book, you'll be inspired to another world. Brother Branham would stand there and he would stand in, stand in two worlds at the same time. And you being a patient and you've maybe traveled 1,500 miles to be in the meeting. Your wife is sick, and you stand for a long time to get a prayer card. And then Brother Branham, at random, at random, maybe 100 prayer cards are given out, 200 prayer cards, maybe even 500 prayer cards are given out. And Brother Branham will just call out, a, call out a, a, maybe 15, and you get called. And you get called, and you know there's been huge lines waiting on those prayer cards, but now you get called. And you walk to the stage, and you stand. You may stand for quite a while, as Brother Branham is just taking his time with each individual. Now listen, God told him where to start. And it wasn't Brother Branham picking out certain individuals. and, 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 And here now, their name is being told to them. And their condition is being told to them. And you know there's something standing between you and I. Brother Branham didn't have a thing in his ear telling him what was on the prayer card. He had none of that modern technology that is at disposal that's a gift today. Brother Branham had a row, generally a row of microphones and he would ask which one is working and I want to speak that everybody in the back can hear. Sound systems were much different. Tapes were much different. It was a new gadget. God knew exactly where to put the prophet, where he could operate in a supernatural realm to where every night there wasn't some Facebook challenge I find it interesting that it took almost 50 years after his death for people to start wanting to challenge that. Are you with me now? After his death, it's all over. Listen, the message is it's done. It's done, been delivered. It's not up for debate. But it was for an inspired people that could hear the word of God. And you were one in a million that caught the word. And just as a patient standing on the stage, you said, that's me. You said, that's me. Listen, the message isn't for everybody. Though we'll treat everybody as well as we can treat them. Because one of them might be a believer. 
We don't want to treat anybody rude, no matter what faith that they're a part of. We want to treat them with respect, Brother Branham did. Brother Branham was very respectful to Orr Roberts and Billy Graham and, and many of those people out there. And he taught us to be respectful to them. Are you with me? Now, why I would say that is, you know, he, he would be in California, he would talk about people running off to the mountains to, to hide and get away from God. John Steeman was up in those mountains trying to get his wife away from this message. And he moved her all over the United States trying to get her away from the message. But one day the seed struck. One day the seed came to life and he became a phenomenal pastor. His son Danny is a phenomenal preacher. Why, well, one of the best. And he stands there and he preaches the word of God. His brother-in-law, Bill Hershberger, other members of the family are real believers. What a, what a paradox that God prepares. He bypasses a million. Many times in cases, better looking, better educated, better jobs. God knew where to find you. He knew exactly where to find you. But this is our moment. Here we stand in this moment. We could truly say this day is this scripture fulfilled. Now, you remember when Brother Brady was sitting in the services and Brother Branham preaches, this day is the scripture fulfilled. And then what is the attraction on the mountain? Brother, Bra Brother Brady found a certain seat in, in, in the place and he had a, a letter in his pocket. It was a letter from his wife. And that letter told him that she was having trouble with her feet. And, and several are called, and then all of a sudden he calls Brother Brady, telling him where he was from, what country he was from, what his name was, tell him the condition of his wife and her feet. Brother Brady would be a testimony of this message around the world. These things don't happen by chance. Now, I, I've got to drive this down. I'll probably finish in the morning. This doesn't happen by chance. God was not taking a chance on finding you. He knew where you would be at. We see the bride's revival happening. These were things that Brother Homer, as our founding pastor here, he longed to see. He longed to see the moving of God every service. He longed to see a people that love this message with all their heart. Not a bunch of make-believers. Not a bunch of people that just want to be there for the emotion, but wanted to be here for the Word. And the Word could ignite their life. He longed for these kind of a services. The scripture tells us that these all died in faith. They didn't give up, but these died in faith, believing. And now it becomes your turn, your cycle. It's happening among us. Don't take it for granted. This is not just other services. As I'm preaching you, this to you tonight, no doubt I could go to many different churches in the nominal world. It wouldn't mean nothing to them. But because of who you are, the vision of God is becoming a living reality. Now we get excited as we are approaching the resurrection and rapture and seeing God, this message, live in humanity. We're seeing, we're seeing the book of Acts happen among us. We're seeing tongues and interpretation of tongues. We're seeing miracles and we're seeing people. The greatest miracle is people living, living the word. And you're written epistles. It's not something you're having to make yourself do. 
but this is like breathing. You don't have to be beat to believe the message. You don't have to be beat to come to church. It's a love affair. God's wife is on the scene in this Laodicean age. Satan's eating. Brother Branham would get tore up in a restaurant. In a restaurant, he would see a woman and she had some stuff over her eyes. Another brother had to stop him. He said, she's got a terrible disease. He said, she must, I've, I've seen horrible diseases all over the world, but she's got a terrible disease. And the brother caught him and said, Brother Branham, that's paint. That's paint. Now, if we could transfer him to 2023, how he felt in that restaurant, can you imagine how difficult for that prophet that lived in two worlds, how difficult it would be for him to function Listen, that gift just didn't happen in a pulpit. Are you with me now? But he would, he, would, he would see a woman with pain on her eyes and he would become so grieved in his spirit. Now we see him, he's, he's like us typical men. He's went shopping with his wife and he's sitting near an escalator. Because he had been transported into hell when he was a boy, and he felt like he was falling and falling and falling. He would never stop falling. That's what sin will do to you. That's what happens when people leave the message. Oh, I'm not going to go that far. You can't stop yourself. There's no edges of the cliff to where you can stop yourself. Because sin will take you further than you ever thought you would go. Sit in these pews and, and become homosexuals later. Lesbians later. Divorce later. It's because you can't. You can't live this message in the world. Sorry, I have to say those things. It's just the truth. Brother Brandon would see those women come up over the escalator. And they're speaking in another language. And they've got those hairdos and they've got that paint all over themselves. And he would tell us that the lost is among us. Can you imagine how difficult it is for him to preach souls now in prison? The eternal lost is among us. Let me just say, sitting in a service like this is grace. Don't never take this for granted. Don't never take it for granted. Our brother Marcus sits here. What a miracle that that is. A God rich in mercy, a cycle of over 20 years. A spiraling cycle that seemed like it would never end. But God rich in mercy reached into the whirlpool of his life because a seed was laying there. And Jesus said, I'll not lose one. I'll not lose one. Sister Judy Hensley sitting back there. It was her brother-in-law. As he's beginning to deteriorate in her life, they took him in and took care of him. Leo was a deacon here. He was a man, a pillar of this church. And through that, that God rich in mercy touched Brother Ted and Sister Judy. Are you with me? Listen, it do you good if you hear their story. She was running a little shop and Ted would come in and flirt with her. They had histories, both of them had histories. God's not so interested in your history. He's interested in your future. Yeah. 
I was speaking to a minister this week, and we were talking about people that are coming in, as they're coming in now. We're in the season of compel them to come. The compelling them to come. One by one, they're coming. We're in the season of the bride's revival, and they're coming in. Listen, they're going to be very disqualified in a lot of ways. But so was you. There was a lot written on your list of history. And God had to wipe and clear the deed. Debts owed against you. You were worthy of hell. Are you with me? And God cleaned you up. And in the cleaning you up, some of us had a lot of cleaning to do. But he knows how to clean your spirit. He knows how to clean your mind. He knows how to clean your body up. He knows how to clean your piercing. He knows, he knows how to clean your paint. He knows how to, he knows how to dress you. Hallelujah. Isn't he amazing God? Now this Bible that we have here tonight, every bit of it's inspired. It's all God's word. And then if you receive the word, you receive God. It's not up for negotiations. Many times when we come to the difficult parts of the scriptures, it's, you know, we just eat the book. And maybe there's parts of the book that's written in there that was difficult for you a long time. But just keep eating. Maybe, maybe it was hair for you sisters. Maybe it was rock and roll for your brothers. You just keep eating. You see, the word cleanses. It just cleanses. Brother Brown makes a statement I think is so profound. This is either the word of God or it's a deceiving book. It is either right or it's wrong. And if even one portion of it is wrong, it's all wrong. Brother Homer would make a statement. He'd say, you know, if you have a pie and one of those apples is rotten, just one, the whole pie is rotten. If you're at my house, I'm the official potato pillar. I can do something. <laughs> And so being the official potato pillar, I come across rotten spots. And so I begin to cut those rotten spots out or I just throw the potato away. Now if I come to a mushy potato, nothing stinks worse than a, there's some cheeses smell worse, but. But if I just, ah, put it in there, that whole pot now becomes contaminated. A few drops of heavy chemical poison can destroy a reservoir. Then when we come to denominational thinking and we start bringing in denominational thoughts, a new way of thinking, what you don't realize, you've made this a deceptive book. 
and before long you're tearing pages out. Well, that's not inspired. It's not for this day. It's not for this day anymore. Listen, this is an eternal prescription. And if it was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's still the same way today. If it's one God, it's still one God today. If it was serpent seed, it's still serpent seed today. And if you've got to have the Holy Ghost, whether you live in America or in Africa or in Zimbabwe, wherever you're at, it's the same Holy Ghost today. Now, Brother Branham explains to us, he said, now, it took 10 years for Elisha to fit Elijah's robe. 10 years, think about that. He said God didn't trim the robe to fit Elisha. I want you to follow this. He, he, didn't, trim, he didn't trim the robe to fit Elisha. He trimmed Elisha. So that's what goes on with you. Brother Ron, why do we have to go to church for decades? Amen. He's still working on me Amen. to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and stars, sun and the earth, Jupiter and Mars. How loving, next word's great, patient he must be. He's still working on me. Sometimes you get under pressure and you know why you're still here. All of a sudden, some, your worst enemy is this piece of flesh. It don't give you a right to sin, but you're thankful for grace. You know, when I hear Brother Branham, as he enters the pulpit, how honest and how humble he was. Father, forgive me of my sins. His sins. He tells us about his house. He said, I, was, I come in and I could tell there was a lot of tension in the house. I'm going to paraphrase here. I could, and he said, I could tell there was a lot of tension in the house. And he said, I just started whistling. Singing a little song. And he said, she was there standing beside of me. He said, I put on an apron. He said, I washed the dishes. Here's a guy that's talking with the angel. Here's a guy that sees some of the most phenomenal visitations that there is. Here's a man that is walking in sunset. Has a sword appear in his hands. He's on top of the mountain and seven angels come down and reveal this book. Listen, if the seals aren't revealed and the thunder's released, we're not going in no rapture. We gotta have a prophet. If Brother Branham did not fulfill Malachi 4, 5, and 6 and reveal the seven seals and the thunders, we are in a mess. But it happened. Glory! Thank God. But he had to fight difficult things in his life. Now let me just take you to a spot. Is this okay? Amen. I'm taking my time because, you know, sometimes on Sunday morning I just preach one service and I can go 100 miles an hour. I've been for a three-day weekend this weekend. so. <laughs> Brother Bram is standing in Finland and he later tells the story that little dead boy. <laughs> Somebody was arguing that with me one time and they said that didn't happen. I said, was you there? Was you there? 
The only way that you can discredit that was you there. <laughs> you listen, when Brother Branham is explaining the, that, that cloud, and he's, he's talking about that cloud for the first time. You can, go, you can go look it up. When he's talking about that cloud that everybody wants to discredit, I want you to watch him. You, go, go, you can go and listen to it. And, he, and, he, and he's talking about that cloud, how it came down, it formed, and the angel was there. Brother Edmund Way falls dead. He falls dead, and they come and check him, and he falls dead because he talked about it, he had a complex. And so he falls dead. Now, Brother Branham has just explained that cloud. Now, God is either right or he's wrong. And so Brother Branham steps off of the stage and goes to him and calls him by name, and he resurrects. Are you with me? God's not going to honor a lie. God's not going to fill you with the Holy Ghost with you drinking and got all kind of porn habits in your life. God don't live with the devil. Are you with me? And listen, it's the truth. And so God amens his word. Brother Man would step out from behind the pulpit and he said, if I've not told you the truth, may God strike me dead. And then have a prayer line. Boom, 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 boom. We're not dealing with a hap soul. Listen, this ought to make you shout here. Listen, if all of that is correct, then what he said about you, then what he said about you is correct. Is this microphone working? If all of that is correct, then what he said about you is correct. He said, you just don't know how it feels. You know where, where you're at. All the devil's out of hell. If he'd line up everything there, was in hell up. And he'd never stop it. It's there. It's got to happen. Notice what he says. I want you to take this and think about it. I spoke this in North Carolina at Brother Joe Green's meeting, standing on the stage. And I said, you could line up every devil in hell. Think ever how powerful, not just one is, but every fallen angel that fell out of heaven and was cast into the earth that operates in the realm of hell. You could line them all up and they couldn't stop it. Now remember, I knelt to this side in the vision and I prayed. He said, you have to do just as you've seen it. And I knelt down and they all gathered around and I said, now watch. Thus saith the Spirit of God, this boy's life will return to him. It wasn't an if. If he don't come to life, call me a false prophet. Brother Chris, you just have to say, Brother Branham had to know where he stood. Now, I'm doing something here. I brought you this far. You got to know where you stand. It's not just for enough for Brother Branham or Brother Ron or Brother Homer or Brother Andrew, these men of God, other people all through this audience. You got to know where you stand. It's no wishy-washy. you got to know where you're standing because Satan would like to keep you here in a tribulation period, but this word says you've got a rapture. He'd like to destroy your family, and you stand there on the word of God and say, you can't have my wife. You can't have my husband. You can't have my children. I've got a token applied. I've got a covenant with God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Don't let the devil steal your home. Don't let him steal your job. Don't let him steal your health. I ought to be somewhat of an example to you. I don't lay at home with the mully grubs. I don't, I don't go around with a negative spirit. This message has taught me to speak positive. Think positive, speak positive. Sure, there's a reality to cancer. Sure, there's a reality to having to take chemo every day. Sure, it's like having the flu almost every day of your life. But listen to you, God's greater. Brother Bram uses this term. He said we're more than conquerors. We just walk right into it as an inheritance. More than conquerors. Now we are dealing with a defeated enemy. We're dealing with a defeated enemy. Don't resurrect him. He's on the canvas. Don't help him get up. He was defeated at Calvary. Don't make him no more than what he is. We're dealing with a defeated enemy. Sickness is defeated. Death is defeated. Hell is defeated. Everything is defeated. Brother Tom Sproul is watching from Ohio tonight. His mother, is, they're, just, they're just saying she could go at any time. She's got some horrible situations in her life. Let me just say this to you. If it's her time to go, there's nothing that the devil can do to steal her soul. And she will step into a well body. But if it's her time to live, there's nothing that the devil can do to keep her in that condition. I walked into your father's room. He was on a kidney dialysis. Forgive me, brain fog sometimes sets. Help me. Sitting beside of Brenda. I know Garland, but I want to call her name. Janetta. It wasn't going to come. I'll say it like Homer would say. I knew I'd get it. A brother was sitting right here, and he, and Brother Homer said, I know you. I know your name. And he went, he kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going. And the man finally, he was in his 90s, he finally said his name. He said, that's right, I knew I'd get it. I walked into Brother Garland's room, and they were telling him he was going to die at any moment. Only had hours to live. And I walked in, and I said, you're going to be a winner either way. And there's nothing the devil can do to get, keep you from getting a well body. But if it's God's purpose, and he's going to raise you right back up. Do you know Garland lived in that body for several years? Not a few moments. God raised him right back up. Listen, there's nothing impossible for God to do. We're dealing, we're disputing with a conquered enemy. And he's a squatter on our land. Brother Ray, I'm going to pray for your sister tomorrow with you. But if you went home tonight, you and Sister Sue went home. I know both of your natures, so this is perfect. You went home tonight, and you hear of these crazy people that just move into people's house and squat. It's in the news now. And they just move into these big homes and hotels and squat and refuse to leave. 
Ray's got something in his house. And he's a very good Christian man. It ain't going to be good. If I could just say it, it ain't going to be pretty. There's things that's going to happen. And maybe after it all happens, they'll call you. Because you have a deed. And that deed has your name on it. And I'm sure Sister Sue's. Probably yours. And it has your name on it. It don't have squatters. It don't have a list of 200 people on that. And so they're drinking your coffee and they're eating your pizza and they're, they're sitting in your favorite chair. But you got a right. You got a right to get them out of your house. I know we live in a nonsense age, but we still got rights. We've got rights, God-given rights. When Satan comes and starts squatting on our health, we can either start believing the doctor's report or God's report. God's report is inspired. Whose report will we believe? It's more than a song, it's a word. By his stripes we are healed. If ye abide in me and my word abide in you, ask what you will. You remember Brother Branham would talk, <laughs> he'd talk about a police officer. And he'd say he may be as skinny as he can be. And he's got a badge on it. I hate to go into a place where they got music playing and they're talking about murdering police officers. They ought to throw them people that write that stuff up, put them in jail. I'm gonna get on my saddle here just for a minute. But these people that don't want police and then they turn around and hire security. These crooked politicians will say anything to get people's votes. And they'll def want to defund the police and defund this. You, you just go ahead and get rid of all the police. You're gonna need a gun. You're gonna need angels all the way around your house. Brother Ron, we're gonna put that on the internet where it'll blow up America. Ha, I could care less. But most of us don't have $100,000 to pay for security for a month. These guys need a raise. They risk their life for me and you. Well, you're just advocating police officers tonight. Well, let me just tell you, you're not gonna make a rapture without a pastor. Well, Brother Ron, I'm just gonna push play. Well, which sermon? I tell you why people don't want a pastor. Because they don't want a real man of God that has a supernatural gift in his life that will come to your kitchen, that'll come to your car and start telling you the conversations that's going on in your life. But a real man of God 
He's not after your billfold. He's after getting you in a new body. That's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in getting your children in a rapture, not just you. Interested in getting your children in a rapture. Well, we're all listening to what Joseph's telling us to listen to. Does he have the Holy Ghost for every sovereign church? I have great respect for him. But he stepped outside of his gift. He may be Brother Branham's son, but he stepped way out of his gift. God called a five-fold ministry. And I don't care if a guy can't preach his way out of a paper bag. He's going to say one sentence that's going to come to your heart and your life. He may stagger through, and it may be the ugliest sermon in the world, but somewhere or another, if you prayed and you pull on the gift of God, I'm not against you listening to tapes. As a matter of fact, I advocate it. That's, I listen to them all my life. I listened to one this morning. But God tells me to come to church. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. We need one another. I need you, you need me. We're a happy family. Let's stand. <laughs> to be continued. I like it when you come to church and you feel like you come to church. Turn to your, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad I came to church. <laughs> you tuned in tonight by the way of internet and it made you mad. Tune back in tomorrow, 11 o'clock. Hallelujah. Ain't he good? Amen. Would you lay your hand on your neighbor if it don't make you feel uncomfortable? We've got a lot of people that's out sick. Glad to have Brother Donnie back. Glad to have Sister Gabrielle and her family back. Boy, that being sick just stinks. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we believe your word. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Lord, we send your word. And the scripture said, and it healed them. I ask you now that you would send your word to those that are sick. Lord, Sister Linda Cracker. Lord, you see her sister's situation. Lord, there's many situations that seem to be impossible, but God, you specialize in it. Many doctors are practicing physicians. They practice this and they practice that. But you're a perfecting physician. You know every, every need. Lord, you see Brother Tom Sproles and his family, what they went through the last year. God, we ask you to touch them. We pray that you'd come on the scene. May they feel the loving hands of God wrap their, his arms around you. Lord, you see Sister Jacqueline, Brother George Quinn's wife, what she went through. God, you just spared her life just a couple of, couple of days ago. Literally spared her life. God, you're a, you're a God that understands. 
Your eyes are on the sparrow. Your eyes is on. You know every time a tick bats its eyes. God, you're an infinite God. It doesn't diminish your power one little bit when you heal us of cancer or save the worst person in the world. Now, God, we just ask you, each one of us have a need. We've been praying for many of these needs. Sister Ruth Ann that's been going through it, I pray that you would touch her. Send your word and just touch her like never before. Lord, as we lay our hands on the, on the neighboring seat, Father, we've got prodigals that need to come home. Oh, Lord Jesus, we ask you, Lord, while there is still mercy, I don't want nobody to go to hell. I don't want nobody to be judged that way. And I mean that with all my heart. I don't want to see nobody lost. And neither did you. Lord, and I ask you, Father, now that you would touch their hearts. Lord, it's praying mamas and praying daddies and praying pastors. And maybe the, the situation looks incredibly impossible. God, you're a God that knows how to go to them and, and bring them home. Touch them just now, Father. Minister to them right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Now we thank you like Jesus did at the, gar at the tomb. I thank you that you heard our prayer. I thank you that you've touched Brother Andrew and Andrew in the meeting in Oklahoma. Lord, may, may children that don't know you, may they come to know you this weekend. The Louisiana camp that's getting ready to happen. Lord, Brother Kelly that's coming, and Brother Tim that's coming. God, you know how to orchestrate every situation. Now, Father, we ask you to touch our lives. Lord, you see the situations that came up. Lord, maybe it's a lost, lost passport. You know how to find it. Maybe it's a lost ring. You know how to find it. Maybe it's keys that's been lost. You know how to find them, Father. A billfold that's disappeared. Lord, you know. Lord, if you can bring a car back, you know how to take care of any situation. Now, dear God, I ask you that, Lord, you'd send your word and now deliver, Lord. It's an inspired word to an inspired seed. Touch them now. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. I want you to say amen to that. Amen. amen. Thank you that you heard our prayer, Father. Thank you. Thank you that you heard our prayer. Well, he's God in the Father. He's God in the Son. Oh, he's God in the Holy Ghost. I know God.
I'm gonna fly for oh, just a few more. For oh, just a few more. Oh, weary days and then. Joy shall never ring. Oh, life. I'm gonna fly away. Oh, life. I'm gonna fly away. Oh, glory. I, I'm gonna fly away. I can't die. No life can't die. Hallelujah. Bye bye. Sing it to him. Oh, I, I'm gonna fly away. Oh, glory. I, I'm gonna fly away. No, I can't die. Hallelujah. Bye bye. Oh, I fly. Oh, you're dismissed this evening. Days and then we'll 